functional it than else. So is there something else that could possibly replace SQL? Is it even possible? And the other part of that is, is NoSQL really here to stay? Is there something we should be, should we be using it? Should we be changing Oracle RDMS? Uh, where, where do we stand with NoSQL? So let, and, and this is mainly target, want to talk Andy to address this first. And then if anybody else has input, feel free to give input. Um, okay, so the, the first thing to understand is um, SQL does not go back to the beginning of time. There were, before the SQL databases came out in the 80s, there were no SQL databases. Okay, so people for, think NoSQL is something new. NoSQL is actually prehistoric, right? It goes back to the beginning of time of information management when the first computer was written. Somebody came up with this idea of let's have an index of each tree, basically, and let's have an API to it. And that's, that, those were the original key value stores. They were things like on, on the mainframe, there's ISAM, VSAM, um, Informix eventually had this product called CISAM, Berkeley DB came out. So the, these, the idea of a key value store is ancient. And relational databases were basically created in the 80s because developers wanted to write reports and get information out of their, their databases. And key value stores and other related non-NoSQL uh, databases were incredibly unproductive in writing reports. There, there you take weeks to write you know, a report to get a simple, you know, sorted list of information out of a, you know, a, a NoSQL database. And that's where SQL came from. SQL just is, is a huge leap forward in programmer productivity. A couple lines of SQL is equivalent in you know, 10 pages of, of writing code against a, a NoSQL style API, a key value store style API. Um, so NoSQL has been around before SQL. And it'll be around, and, and SQL and, and NoSQL systems have coexisted for 30 years now. And so this whole question is sort of only relevant for people who don't know their history, which is all the young developers out there, of course, know nothing about what happened you know, more than 10 years ago, right? So of course, NoSQL systems have a role. They're, they're very good at what they do, very simple you know, applications that don't require you know, the equivalent of writing you know, reports and joins and order buys and all the kinds of stuff you do trivially in SQL. Um, NoSQL is great at that. And there, will always be, there, will always be, there is a use case for it, and there will always will be one. Um, the more modern NoSQL systems, like you know, the, uh, the MongoDBs and Cassandras and all those guys, uh, and actually, Amazon DynamoDB is probably the, the right one to actually look at. Um, well, all Amazon did is they were using Berkeley DB in their e-commerce system, and they, they said, you know, wouldn't it be great if we had N of these B trees, not just one? And let's add a hash distribution layer in front of Berkeley DB, and that's where DynamoDB came from. And that's the, the direct ancestor of all the, the, the more recent NoSQL systems. So it's basically just a hashing layer on top of a B tree. You know, this is trivial technology, and that's why there's about 40 or 50 companies that have NoSQL databases, including Oracle. Um, and again, you know, there's a great use case for these kind of products. They do really simple applications really well. Um, they scale nicely. And if you have an application that fits that, that mold and that's all you need, it's great. SQL systems obviously are much more flexible. They do everything NoSQL systems do, plus they make developers really productive doing really, you know, doing complex app applications that require, you know, if you look at, you know, our uh, Fusion applications or SAP applications, real commercial business applications, you know, if you want to write those in a NoSQL product, you need thousands of de developers, <laughs> you know, t time, you know, thousands of times the number of developers to write the same code as you would with SQL. So, you know, and, and then the size of the market really shows you the difference between the, the use cases of the two products. You know, relational databases are over a $30 billion market. NoSQL databases are one of these classical $0 billion markets. You know, maybe there's a few hundred million there. Um, but basically, they're free products. There's not a lot of value there. You know, MongoDB, huge, lots of huge downloads. Everybody's playing with it, but almost nobody pays for it, right? And so, you know, there's not really a good business model. But the business model is actually another interesting aspect of the, no, the modern NoSQL databases. You know, they have the freemium model where you download it for free, you play with it, and then if you want support, which a few people will pay for support, you pay by subscription model. Um, traditionally, relational databases on-prem have the, the licensing model where you pay up front and then you pay for support. 
And it's now that everybody's moving to cloud that that model is now becoming available for all the relational databases as well. So um, the business model is also something that I think is, was interesting around NoSQL databases and is now becoming pretty prevalent as everybody makes their software available on clouds using the same kind of subscription model. Um, Hadoop is a whole different beast. I don't know if I really, maybe we should leave that for another questioner, but as far as I'm concerned, Hadoop is just becoming a relational database. You know, the whole idea that MapReduce was interesting was, a, was exciting a few years ago and everybody has pretty much decided, you know, MapReduce is not interesting. We're all going to offer SQL on top of HDFS and there's 20 different SQL systems. So there, what, what's really happening to Hadoop, it's becoming a data warehouse relational database and you know, I, you know, beyond that, it's not clear that there's much, much other use of Hadoop. But Hadoop is here to stay. HDFS is a is a nice distributed file system. It's getting embedded in all the offerings from all the vendors, including Oracle. We have it on our big data appliance. We have it up on our cloud now. Um, it's a it's a nice technology. File systems again, they go back 40 years. Hadoop is just the latest generation cool file system technology that certainly will survive. And everybody is embracing Hadoop and, you know, MapReduce, you know, that might survive, but it's certainly not, not very popular. And again, at the end of the day, you can always measure success by, you know, revenue and market share and all that. And Hadoop, you can measure the, the fad of Hadoop declining by looking at, you know, Hortonworks stock price, right? You know, a year ago, they were a $1.5 billion company market cap, now they're 500 million, right? You know, so it's, you know, that's, that pretty much reflects the hype cycle of what's going on with Hadoop. It's, it's very popular, but, you know, it's not as, it's not as going to be as successful as people thought a couple of years ago. But I'll, I'll let you go on to the next, <laughs> next question. Does anybody want to be quick, like, or we're running out of time on this question, but you want to throw a quick bite in on that? Yeah, the... um, I, I guess I can throw a quick one in on NoSQL databases, and I, I think of them as, it's when you're dealing with data that has a single use, right? So the big benefit of relational is that you can easily write reports on it, you can do other things with the data. No SQL databases, you can put it in one way, you can pull it out one way, and that's it. It's very limited use data, which is what we had before relational database. You lose that flexibility. And is this the question, does this question also include, will SQL be sticking around, will we find something better than SQL, or is that another question? That's part of this question, yeah. Okay. So I'll talk to that for a little bit. Um, so I think what, one of the things I find interesting about SQL is that it is going so strong after 35 years. Andy has pointed out previously that not only is SQL still around, but it's still innovating in dramatic new ways. And it's keeping pace with changes, massive changes in the way that data is being manipulated, the way it needs to be delivered to users, and all of that. Um, and I think really a part of SQL's lasting value and why I don't see anything coming along to replace it anytime soon is that I think that SQL and set operations and declarative ways of thinking actually mirror the way our brains work in the world. So if you look around the world, if you're going outdoors and looking at things in the world, you think naturally in terms of sets, patterns. And I think because of that, the relational model pretty much grew out of innate brain processing. And it actually syncs up pretty well with the way we look at the world. And what's interesting there then is that at the same time that I really believe that's true, and far, for example, superior to an object model as a, as a dominant way of addressing and manipulating data, the odd thing then is how can it not be intuitive to write and think about SQL and set processing? And I think that's one of, again, our big challenges at Oracle and in our community is how do we figure out how to teach people to think in sets more effectively? And how to build SQL statements more effectively? Yeah, that brings up the point. Like SQL, I, I find SQL has this reputation as being difficult, or like builder doesn't want to do it. I find that the, the SQL has a, uh, this impression people have it as difficult, and like a lot of developers don't want to do it. So is there a way to make it easier? That's a big question. But it, I mean, this. SQL is difficult, so it's harder to write a, well, I'll give you a, a join as a piece of SQL than it is to pull the contents of one table back into your application and the contents of the other table and join them in your application. That sounds like a lot more work than just writing a SQL statement. Yes, yeah, so I mean, one part of the problem is there's a lot of misunderstanding. So if I'm a, maybe a Java programmer, I'm like, I get this, I get you know, this data, I have to join it with this data, and I write some Java code that does it, not thinking that I can just do a SQL statement to do a join in the database. Uh, I, the question is, how do we deal with that? I educate the public. Yeah, and I, you know, I think a part of it is that partly going back to SQL being around for so long, so there's 
basic SQL, and then there are advanced features. Analytics is an advanced feature of SQL. That's the way it's projected. That's